Our college football analyst Trevor Maddich and Trevor tomorrow will be two weeks since the Buckeyes last played a game of 42 35 win over Indiana. So what areas does Ohio State need to be sure up against against the Spartans with maybe a little bit of rust creeping in? Well Matt it was generalized rampant uncharacteristic sloppiness and the committee will be watching to see if that was an anomaly or an identity because they're running out of time now to get it wired tight. Justin Fields contributed. This is his third interception. He's got seven guys to block, Matt. Plenty of time. He bugs out anyway, and now he's in trouble. But then he makes it worse by trying to fix it. Now, I don't know about you, but this looks like he's in the grasp, right? A little bit in the grasp? A Just bit. a tiny bit? Yeah. And you can see scrolling through his head as he's laying on his back after this interception what his head coach is about to say to him. Just don't, Justin. But I'm not worried about that because that's not Justin Fields. He'll be able to flip a switch and fix it. I'm worried about the pass coverage because this little switch by the receivers threw off their communication. Two guys on the outside zone, nobody in the zone next to it, and you've got wide open Indiana receivers running free, and this is one of the reasons they threw for almost 500 yards against the Buckeyes. But wait, there's more. Now, we all know about pick plays, right? This is not supposed to happen, but if you act well, it, it works and they don't flag you for it. So, so this poor corner gets picked, right? But then they will pick him a second time. <laughs> and at this point, he's got to be thinking, what in the world is going on out here? That's really hard to deal with. But the thing is, teams will keep doing that to them. They've got to be better. And the teams that they will face in the playoff, if they get there, will do all of this stuff better than Indiana did it. They have got to wire it tight. The committee's watching. Yeah, people looking at that Ohio State-Indiana game. Ohio State was in control of that one for pretty much three and a half quarters. Indiana mounted a comeback either way. Ohio State still unbeaten. Let's switch gears now to BYU. They're going to face number 18, Coastal Carolina, tomorrow after COVID-19 issues prevented Liberty from playing in this game. So, Trevor, what should should we be looking for in this matchup that was just put together? That this Coastal Carolina offense is fun to watch and really hard to prepare for, especially on a short week. BYU just found out about this about 48 hours ago. It's a run-heavy option offense that combines standard zone read with elements of Navy's triple option. It's crazy. And so you've got to devote people to the line of scrimmage to stop it, right? Problem there is the quarterback Grayson McCall is really accurate and good at torching you when you come up to stop what could be a triple option play at any time. Zach Wilson of BYU, though, has the ability to keep up because they are one of the best downfield passing offenses in all of college football. Fields is second only, excuse me, Zach Wilson is second only to Justin Fields at completion percentage of balls thrown at least 20 yards in the air. And I think BYU has to come into this game thinking that their defense might take a little while to get used to that triple option, and they may need to go deep to keep up in a track meet. This should be a whole lot of fun, Matt. Wilson with 34 total touchdowns and only two interceptions this season. Trevor, this is going to be a good one. Sneaky best game of the weekend, 5.30 Eastern tomorrow on ESPNU. Trevor, thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.